Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle Good morning. Welcome to worship at Leap of Faith Church. I'm glad you're here with me this Sunday morning. My name is Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. Again, thank you for being here with me today. Today we're going to be talking about what love really means. Now, if you've ever been in church before in your life, uh, more than a time or two, you've probably heard a sermon on that topic before, but really, can we hear it enough? Can we really hear it enough? What does love really mean? First, though, let me ask for your help. Next Sunday here at Leap of Faith Church, we'll be observing All Saints Sunday, both online and in the sanctuary, by remembering the lives of those we love who've passed in the year just gone by from this life into life eternal. If there's someone whose name you'd like to have included, please get in touch with me. Uh, email me at... at uh, lofchurch at hotmail.com or text 903-821-4505. Um, the name of the person whose name you'd like to, to uh, be remembered. If you're worshiping on YouTube, please subscribe to the Leap of Faith Church YouTube channel. Please leave a comment if you enjoy the worship service. Remember that you can click share and you can share, share the service with someone who'd enjoy it. We, we can chat during the YouTube premiere. Those comments go away after the premiere is over, uh, but you can always leave a comment. If you're worshiping on Facebook, comments are welcome there too. We'd be grateful as always for your financial support of ministry at Leap of Faith Church. If you're on YouTube, you can text to give 903-225-8774. Um, you can Always, always click the PayPal button on our, on our emailed newsletter or on our website, mylofc.org. Or you can just write a check to Leap of Faith and mail it to 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. If you're worshiping on our uh, Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, there's a donate button. Just click that button. Easy way to give. Again, thank you for coming to worship today. If you'd like to know more about the church, our website is still is still under construction, but it is up and posted, mylofc.org. There'll be changes, lots of changes in the weeks to come. Maybe you'd like to see uh, week to week or sometimes even day to day how those changes are shaping up again, mylofc.org. And then there's our Facebook page, Leap of Faith Church. All right then. Let's begin our worship service with a prayer. We love you, Lord, with all our heart, with all our soul. We love you, Lord, with all our mind. We're here this morning to show that love as we worship you now. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning comes from Matthew 22. It's verses 34 through 46. And this is the way that lesson goes. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, question, uh, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second's like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be a son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask Jesus any more questions. I ask God to bless this reading of God's Word. As you might know, 
Uh, as maybe you know, in addition to serving as pastor of Leap of Faith Church, I also serve as, as director of a nonprofit organization called Visions of Sugar Plums in Pottsboro. Visions of Sugar Plums, it's a nonprofit organization that provides non-perishable foods to students in the Pottsboro School District, Pottsboro Independent School District, so they have plenty to eat on weekends and during extended school breaks. This means that on most Fridays, I arrive at our Visions of Sugar Plum building at about 6.30 in the morning to turn the lights on and to set the tables out on the parking lot and get the first food boxes out there so they'll be ready when our first recipients start showing up about 7 o'clock. Since we operate during the school year by and large, when I arrive, it is darker than dark when I get there. I'm usually the only person who's around for the few, first few minutes, and so while the area we're located in is a pretty safe situation, I do try to be aware of my surroundings, noticing if maybe there's someone hanging around who shouldn't be hanging around, you know. A couple of weeks ago, I was out there in the dark, uh, about 6.35, setting things out on the parking lot, and a man in a big truck pulled up. He wasn't a volunteer, and it was too early for recipients, as I mentioned, it was that time of day that's darkest before, because it's just before the dawn. I couldn't see the person in that truck clearly, and I didn't recognize the truck. And so I was feeling a little bit nervous as he rolled down the window of his truck because, well, you know, you just never know. It turns out that he was there. He had to come early to pick up uh, food for his kids because he had to be at work closer to 7. Turns out he was feeling a little nervous, too. He'd never been to Visions of Sugar Plums before. He didn't know me. He didn't know how we operated. And, well, you know, it can be hard to ask for help. At least for many of us, it's hard to ask for help. So we loaded up his food and we struck up a conversation. And it turns out we have friends in common. And it turns out he's a very nice guy. He is such a nice guy that he showed up last week a few minutes even earlier to help me carry food boxes out to the tables. And it was a really, really nice thing for him to do, to come early, to do heavy lifting, to help me before he began his own work day. His kindness, it put me in the right frame of mind to give some thought to our Bible story today. It's a pretty familiar Bible story, of course, but there may be some background that you're kind of cloudy on. So, so in the story, the way that Matthew tells it, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday of the last week of Jesus' life. It always helps me to anchor Bible stories in time like this. So it's Tuesday, and Jesus is already, already ridden into Jerusalem on that donkey. It is a busy, busy day for Jesus. The day before, he'd visited the temple and he'd turned things upside down there. Then he left Jerusalem. He spent the night in Bethany. He came back to the temple where the chief priests and elders challenged his authority to behave as he'd behaved the day before, causing all kinds of trouble turning over those tables and so on. The chief priests and the elders, they asked Jesus trick questions, which he'd rebutted so effectively that the chief priests and, and Pharisees determined that the best, the best way to handle Jesus was just go ahead and arrest him. Then the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians, who were the supporters of, of Roman rule there, they showed up and they tried to trap Jesus with trick questions too, questions designed to undermine his authority. Then the Sadducees, the Jewish bigwigs who sort of ran things in the temple, they came to Jesus and it was the same old thing. They tried to trip Jesus up with nonsensical questions, which he neatly sidestepped. The Sadducees, they went away, but in our story today, the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they show back up with yet another question. Now, they don't care a thing about what Jesus is going to answer. They just want to undermine his authority. But of course, of course, when one of them, an expert in religious law, asks Jesus what the greatest commandment in all the religious law is, Jesus gives an answer that truly resounds. So now picture it. Picture this. There's this lawyer speaking to Jesus in, in a superior, condescending tone of voice. Teacher, he says to Jesus sarcastically, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in all the law? In effect, that lawyer is saying to Jesus, so tell us, you pitiful pretender, tell us, we who are the experts. In effect, that lawyer is saying to Jesus, tell us, you idiot, know nothing. Tell us, we who truly know everything. 
in effect, that lawyer is saying to Jesus, you so-called teacher, entertain us, amuse us with your ill-informed idea of what the greatest commandment in the law is. Now, odds are you don't, you don't have to have your Bible open in front of you to know the answer to that question as well as Jesus did. The greatest commandment, if you know it, say it along with me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and with all your mind. And then Jesus adds, this is the first and greatest commandment. There's another one like it, and that's love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, of course, he's not sitting there making these words up. He's quoting scripture from what we call the Old Testament, that part about loving God. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and that part about loving our neighbors, we can find that in Leviticus it's chapter 19, verse 18. Jesus says the greatest commandment, well, it's love. Loving God, loving our neighbors, loving ourselves, that's the whole deal. That's the heart of the law. That's the foundation of the law. Love, it's the starting point of every other law. Jesus doesn't answer back in kind to the lawyer. He doesn't answer sarcasm with sarcasm. He doesn't answer superiority with superiority. He doesn't answer condensation at conde condescension with condescension. Interesting, isn't it, that this lawyer, the one who's supposed to be the authority on the law, the one who in theory should know all about love because love is what the law commands first and foremost, this lawyer has set out to humiliate and embarrass and degrade Jesus. And Jesus doesn't give as good as he gets, answering humiliation with humiliation, embarrassment with embarrassment, degradation with degradation. Jesus answers that lawyer with love. He talks about love and he demonstrates love, responding to the lawyer with civility and grace. I have no idea how Jesus felt about that lawyer. How he felt about that lawyer doesn't matter. What matters is what Jesus did. And what he did was respond to pure mean with the heart of his teaching, which is, of course, love. Jesus responds to that lawyer with love, which is as I understand, which, which, which doesn't, as I understand it, have much to do with what we feel. Love has to do with what we do. One of the worst conflicts I ever had with any member of the church I've ever served came after I'd preached the story we have today and said what I always say about the great commandment, which is that love doesn't, doesn't matter so much what we feel about another person as what, it, as, as what it has to do with what we do, what we do to or for or about that other person. Now, this church member I just mentioned, he took considerable exception to that idea. He found it really offensive. Nevertheless, I stand by it. Love isn't what we feel. Love is what we do. So hold that thought in the back of your mind while I ask you to consider this question. Do you know your neighbors? If we don't know them, how can we love them in the way that Jesus is commanding, not asking, but commanding us to love them? which is, of course, not having warm feelings toward them, but serving them in compassionate ways. I started out this morning by talking about visions of sugar plums, so let me circle around now back to that. This past Wednesday evening, 10 people who had already put in a full day of work pulled up into the back loading area of the Pottsboro Brookshire's grocery store at 5 p.m. with trucks and trailers and SUVs. It was starting to rain. It was starting to rain pretty good, but nevertheless, those 10 together with three store employees, they loaded five pallets of food. Now, maybe you don't know how big a pallet of food is. I've never actually measured one, but I've loaded plenty, and I say maybe four by four by five feet, maybe something like that. And maybe you don't know how heavy a case of apple juice or beef stew or green beans in. I, as I, I've never really weighed them, but I've carried plenty and they are plenty heavy. The long and the short of it is these 10 people showed up in the rain to do heavy lifting, heavy lifting at the end of a long work day. They certainly weren't paid to do it. They did it because they know, they know that there are hungry children among our neighbors. They know our neighbors and they did it because they love like Jesus tells us to love, through our kindness and caring toward others, toward our neighbors. But we have to know our neighbors, who they are, before we can love them like Jesus commands. 
So what I'm asking you to do, what I'm asking you to do now is to get to know your neighbors, literally the people who live near you. As you know, I'm always asking you to invite a friend to worship with us to click that share button, and I still think that's important. But I'm asking you to experiment with that in another way this week. Maybe it's as simple as complimenting your next door neighbor's Halloween decorations. Maybe it's something like helping them get their dog back in the fence. Maybe it's saying and meaning that you'll be praying for the family across the street that's dealing with a move they didn't expect and don't want. So there you go. We've heard the commandment, love God with everything we've got and love our neighbors too with everything we've got. That's a commandment. So go and do it. Amen. All right, then. We have joys. We have concerns this morning. And if you have some to add, you're welcome to do that. Text me, 903-821-4505, or email me. Let me say that again, 903-821-4505, or email lofchurch at hotmail.com. If you'd like your concern to be kept in confidence, no worries. Just tell me, and it will be on my private prayer list. But here's our here's our here's our church prayer list. Pray, if you will, for those who leave who lead our world, our country, our state, the communities we live in. Please pray for all those with health-related concerns: Cheryl, Pam, Pat, Robin, Ray, Debbie, James, another Pat, Dwayne, Billy, John, Ned, Judy. Dell, Miriam, Carol, Steve, Dassey. I ask your prayers for all those in Lewiston, Maine, who are the survivors of the shooting there that, um, that took place on Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night. Please pray for all whose lives have been touched by that shooting. I ask your prayers for those who serve in the military of our country, especially Tyler, Jessica, Devin, Clayton, and Colin. One birthday this week. Uh, 29th today, that's Lily Kitchen's birthday. Happy birthday, Lily. We have other joys as well. We're thanking God for Maggie Helvey's ministry. She led our women's group this past Tuesday. We're praying for Annie Bowen, teacher assistant at Perrin Early Childhood Center. She's our staff member of the week. We continue in prayer for Rita's niece, expecting those twins coming soon now in December. And of course, the Leap of Faith Band. We pray for them, for Summer Holbrook, Brad Nixon, who produced this worship service. Again, you have joys, you have concerns, just let me know, 903-821-4505. And now let's pray. God, in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, you've shown us just how far your love can go. So far that you love each one of us, totally warts, scars, moral failures, and all you love, each one of us forever. Help us love like you do, God, with forgiveness and generosity and with acceptance that others, troublesome though they may be to us, are loved by you just as much as we are. Remind us to turn to you regularly for your help in living in peace with those we don't especially like or respect. Help us remember that your command that we love others doesn't mean that we're flooded with warm feelings toward others, but instead that we do them no harm, that we offer our help as help is needed. And God, open our eyes. Open our eyes to those who are living by and large without love from much of anyone. Once we see them, keep them front and center in our hearts and minds, searching always for ways to be those ones who can reveal your love to them through our words and actions. We're asking you to hear this prayer together with our joys, concerns, those that have been spoken and those that haven't been spoken, but that are being offered to you silently now. And hear us as we pray, pray together in the way Jesus teaches us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What does Leap of Faith Church believe? If you have been here more than a time or two, I imagine that you can answer that. What does Leap of Faith believe? We believe in the historic confession of the Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, which goes like this. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, it speaks to our theology, what we believe. Uh, here's our value statement at Leap of Faith. Leap of Faith Church recognizes a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treat treated equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity with respect to sacramental worship, service leadership, marriage, and ordination. Thank you again for coming to worship this morning. I hope you'll be back next week. If I can be of help to you, if Leap of Faith can be of help to you, just let me know, 903-821-4505. If you're not receiving our Thursday night email newsletter, let me know that too. Just provide your email address. We'll make sure that you get it. To find out more about the church, mylofc.org. As I said, it's under construction, changing almost daily now. Um, so kind of check in and see what's, uh, see what's there. On a, on a more immediate basis, our Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, great source of information. If you'd like to support Leap of Faith Church ministry at Leap of Faith Church, options for giving include texting to give at 903-225-8774. If you get our newsletter, click the PayPal button. There'll be a PayPal button on that mylofc.org website. I don't know if it's been installed yet, but keep watching for it. Or you can use the donate button on the Facebook page, or you can write a check to Leap of Faith Church and send it to 5615 North Farm to Market 1417 Sherman, Texas 75092. Again, thank you. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, and I hope you'll remember what we talked about today, knowing our neighbors so we can, can to get better at doing what Jesus commands us to do, which is loving our neighbors. Please remember that if I can be helpful to you, I'm always glad to hear from you. Now, stay tuned for music from the Leap of Faith Church Band. And then when the music is over, go in peace, my friend. Go in peace.
Take my lips and 